Hi, welcome to The Throttle Cable. I'm Rob, thank you for coming to join me. What am I doing today? Today I'm going to be talking about something a little bit eccentric and whenever I hear that word I think of somebody maybe in a floral shirt, a little bit wacky, a little bit crazy and probably quite good conversation. But what I actually mean by eccentric in this case is something that is off centre and this is nothing less than a Momo eccentric spacer. Now why have I got this? If you've done a, a wheel upgrade on your 996, especially to the Momo, the, the, the centre position of the, the Momo wheel is bang on, dead centre, as you probably expect every steering wheel to be. Um, now when you swap a 996 steering wheel out for a Momo, you lose the top of your rev counter, you can't see the top numbers and you've got to kind of either look down or, or time it by hearing. And honestly, it's a bit annoying. I didn't think too much about this other than the fact that okay well maybe the Momo wheel was a little bit smaller and it's cutting off the top of the dial. That's not the case and the only reason I found this out was a quick chat with a guy on Instagram, Tom McGrath, you know who you are, thank you very much. He, uh, he got in touch and said have you heard of the eccentric spacer for the Momo? What it does is exactly that, it takes the wheel off centre and raises it up 10 millimetres so you can start to see all of the clusters again. And when I first thought about that, I thought, well, that's going to be a bit weird because if the steering wheel turns, it's going to be turning off centre of the axis. So when it's all the way around 180 degrees, it's actually going to be lower than it was to start with by 10 millimetres. And at the 12 o'clock position, higher by 10 millimetres. But it's not as strange as you might think. I, um, the next day I drove the, uh, the family car, our VW Tiguan, and I you know, parked the car, went lock to lock as I was doing a three point, three point turn. Um, doing a, a parallel park and I noticed the wheel went up down up down as I, I went through the revolution because the wheel on it is eccentrically spaced it's not bang on in the center and then I thought okay well I've never noticed this before in the 996 until I took off the other steering wheel and they don't seem to be that different in size so I measured it with a tape measure which I'll show you in a minute it looks like the 996 steering wheel the original one is offset by 15 millimeters so if you think this is weird, you've been driving around with a weird car all this time and probably didn't even know it. So I'm gonna have a look, see what difference this make. I'll show you the difference on the original wheel where it's off center and some before and after shots of the Momo line of sight towards the dash and towards the, uh, the rev counter. See what difference it makes. So here we are with the standard 996 steering wheel. Now the 996 steering wheel is 380 mil across. The Momo Mod 7 is 350 mil. So you're, you're losing three centimetres, but all in all, you know, that's only 15 millimetres top to bottom. So it didn't quite explain the difference that I was seeing with the dash. Now if I turn it around this way, because I've got a nice uh, fabric tape here, I can show you that when I come across here into essentially the, the outside edge of the, uh, the whole of the, uh, the column, I've got 195 millimetres until I reach that inner lip. Now if I go from the other side, you can see from here we've got 210 millimeters until we hit the inner side of that lip so there you go it is offset 15 millimeters but you never knew that by way of comparison i'm in the family tiguan where i had that eureka moment of this actually also had an eccentrically spaced wheel and i'd never noticed so looking at this wheel if you pick some sort of line of sight moment on the dash beyond the wheel as I turn it through 180 degrees, you'll see it move up and down because of that eccentric spacing. So from here, if I'm going 180 degrees, across the top of that steering wheel behind here, I essentially miss about 15 mil as it moves up and down. So now I can see the rim of the dash. Now that is completely gone, I'm more up here. So it's a good 15 mil again, eccentrically spaced wheel. Who knew? It's a common thing. Before I fit this in the car, I thought we'd give you a quick view of what you get in this little set. So this is the eccentric spacer. I measured it, they say it's 15 millimeter deep. It's actually about 12, 13 millimeter deep. So that's how far it's gonna space the wheel further towards you. And then you've got the 10 millimeter step up. So you can see the six bolt spacing of where the original column would be. And then the six bolt spacing where the steering wheel is gonna go in the front. So you take off the, the steering wheel, you can reuse those Allen bolts in here into these um, recessed bolt holes. And then you get given another six Allen bolts, as well as yet another free Allen key to add to my collection of God knows how many free Allen keys I will never use again in my life. But there you go. That's what you get. Let's give it a quick uh, fit to the car and see what it looks like.
So without the eccentric spacer, if you just cast your eye a line straight across the top of the wheel or around the wheel, pick a point on the dash behind it, you can see that without the eccentric spacer, the wheel stays in exactly the same place. There is no up and down movement to where that rim ends up. Now I'm going to swap that over and do a similar thing now once the eccentric space is on and see how much of a difference it really makes. So for the sake of comparison, this is my line of sight as it stands now without the eccentric spacer. I can just see the bottom of the digit number four at the top of the, the rev counter, but I can't see the top of the rev counter. So hopefully this extra 10 mil will bring that back into sight. So I'll let you uh, see what difference that makes in a moment. Important point, now because that is cast alley and our earthing ring needs to be steel, um, I need to make a slight change here. What I need to do is, is take my earthing ring and run a strap off the back of here onto the boss. Otherwise, you know, beforehand I had the screw coming straight through to the metal on metal contact. I'm gonna lose that, so I won't get my continuity of earth from the horn button. So I'm just gonna quickly get a cable attached to here with a little spade clip and crimp it on um, a cable onto a spade clip onto the side of the boss. So this is my solution for the earthing strap. So just a, a spade connector on one end and a, a ring on the other. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna clamp that through here when I put one of my, my studs through, one of my Allen bolts. These are nice because they'll just deform to the shape of that contour, which is good because they're just soft. They're, uh, they're designed to be crimped and clamped. So that'll deform into there, that little copper strip. Other end will attach onto here we'll, with that on the front going straight through that bolt which goes into the hub that will give me my, my continuity of earth and make sure my horn still works. So everything's back together. Um, it, I can notice that the steering wheel is now close to me. My reach has gone a little bit longer. So I'm going to pop this back into the column a bit. So I'm essentially where I was before without the spacer. And I can see all of the cluster, absolutely all of it. It, it, it is like it were OEM. Let me show you what that looks like. But first, before I do that, I'm just going to do another turn so you can see how it makes a difference, that eccentric spacer. Look top and bottom again, we'll see how far we get around the revolution. Before I do that, avoid the steering lock, let me put the key in. But yeah, pick a, a line of sight moment beyond the dash and then we should be able to see how the steering wheel moves. It's so minor, you're never gonna notice that whilst driving. I mean, I, I, the normal 996 has it and I've never noticed it. So. Uh, there you go, let me show you the line of sight of what this actually looks like from where I'm sat now. I've got a whole view of the cluster. This is my line of sight view, so I can see up to the top of the rim of the rev counter, so beyond the extremity of the dial and, and to the rim. So if you had uh, silver surrounds around these, which I know a lot of people have got, you'd probably see the entire silver surround and then nothing more above it. But you've got an unhindered view now of all of the dials, which is which is really nice. It's as Porsche intended and uh, makes this Momo update a lot nicer to live with. Well thanks for watching, if you like the channel please subscribe, you know it helps me out and you can follow the other bits and pieces I've got to do.